Good evening, friends. Uh, I hope you had a very warm and nice uh, tea and or coffee break and are refreshed for our last session of the day, which is experience predictability in software project delivery. It will be uh, presented by Pranabendu Bhattacharya and Sangamitra Ghosh Basu. Pranabendu is having more than 20 years of IT experience and is heading the TCS Estimation Center of Excellence for last eight years. He is a postgraduate from IIT Kharagpur and has been a chief consultant for many, estimate, many estimation consulting engagements. He is also one of the core members of ITPC guiding committee and presented, the peri presented papers in various international colloquiums. Whereas Sangamitra has 13 years of experience in software project delivery and delivery management and project management. She has around nine years of experience only in the project estimation technology techniques uh, and has been instrumental in defining, developing, and deploying estimation models for multiple engagement types and is currently in engaged in various consulting assignments at TCS. So I welcome bro both Pranabendu as well as Sangamitra on stage to take this presentation forward. Thank you. Very good evening. It's really my pleasure to get an opportunity to present in this conference, especially in front of the knowledgeable audience like you. My topic for the day is experience the predictability in software project delivery. The predictability or certainty is extremely, extremely, extremely important for any kind of industry. However, for software industry, to achieve predictability is really a complex, very tough, very critical. Let me share one of my experience. See, few years back, the CIO of one of the largest financial organization in US stated, that my problem is like this. At the start of the financial year, I am allocating budget with an anticipation, with an expectation that by the end of the financial year, say, 100 projects will be completed successfully. But after eight or nine months, when I am revisiting the health of all my 100 projects, I realize maximum 20% of it can be completed within the next three, four months. So what are the options to me? I have no other alternatives but to prioritize those 20% project to be in time in the market with respect to my competitors and simultaneously I need to scrap the rest 80% project. Now, even to complete those 20% highly prioritized project, I need to hire some short-term resource in very high rate. This grab value of 80% of the project and this hiring of resources, short-term resources, crossing billion dollars each and every year, this is my problem. 
So my question was like this, on what basis you are allocating budget? He was telling that it's like one fine Sunday morning, someone is coming and throwing some numbers to me. <laughs> Probably it has no basis absolutely. That's the problem. So, to address this scenario, what are the measures, what we need to do is what we are going to discuss in the next 25 to 30 minutes. My agenda typically break has been broken into three sections. First one, the need, the challenges, and then what is our solution approach and a real, real, real life case study, okay? See, these three numbers, look at this. The 66% project failure, even after being implemented in production, 50% of it is rolled back. Just try to imagine the huge amount, it is, the loss is not only the monetary loss, but also the loss of intellectual property, loss of effort, loss of time, loss of ideas. If we look into the top major reasons, reasons for these failures, there is an interesting thing. There is one connection small thread connecting all those causes directly or indirectly are software estimation. We need to do first time right. Now, if we can do first time right, this estimation will, correct estimation, accurate estimation, will help us to manage our schedule properly, optimize our cost properly, we can forecast budget more accurately, we can improve the quality of our product, and we can reduce the project management and QA efforts significantly. Everything in turn is contributing to our productivity improvement. So, this estimation, is the binding force connecting all these parameters. If we can improve a minimal percentage of accuracy, we can save multi-billion dollars. Now, the common challenges and gaps from our experience are all these things. See, like limited reuse of past organizational experience. We may have executed few thousands of projects, few millions of projects, but unless we store in our repository the what are the best practices, what are the lessons learned. So the and for, the, for future projects, the mistakes should not be repeated. That's why we need to have some central repository. That is missing in most of the organization. I, I, I am quite sure that all of my friends, that most of you have faced these things. Unavailability of standardized rules. 
See, not only from different organization, within the same organization, for a particular type of project, you will see varied types of estimation techniques, and most of which are guesstimate type. Okay? It is person dependent. That needs to be eliminated. Absence of guidelines or proper process, say like consideration of the project specific parameters, geography specific parameters, or maybe domain specific, technology specific parameters, those things are not that exhaustive. Absence of governance, review, approve those process. These are the few of the limitations I have highlighted here. Now, we have, it's enough, we have explained all the challenges. So you all are, uh, I think we all are in the same page. Now come to the core part, that is the solution. In the solution sections, there are three categories. It is a three-legged process, you can say. First one is the estimation framework, which is driving the standardization. Within that framework, there are so gamut of different techniques for size estimation, effort estimation, schedule estimation, and cost estimation. Then, using those techniques and using the multi-dimensional decision matrix, we need to identify or select what would be the best suited model or methodology for a given combination. So model is nothing but a set of techniques, see one each from for size, effort, schedule and cost for a given combination of decision metrics. What are the decision metrics? It can be technology or platform, domain, maybe software development life cycle, whether it is a waterfall model or agile or iterative, it can be anything. So depending all those parameters, we will, we need to identify the best suited method or model. This needs to be supported by uh, the proper process and guidelines. This is the need of the day. If we can select it properly, this will drive the accuracy. And after, after that, if we use all the suggested or recommended techniques, then we need to gather some actual data. It can be quantitative or qualitative, okay? And accordingly, we need to take action for further improvement. Now, let me go in little more detail. See, the inbuilt component within these frameworks are typically size estimation, techniques, we know, and the, uh, my friends who are actually working in software industry might be aware of that. The size estimation te technique can be function point, use case point, Kellogg, Cosmic, FISMA, NESMA, anything. There are a lot of techniques available in the industry. Effort estimation, it can be analogous technique, similar type of project, it's a, I mean, 
uh, top down technique, bottom up work breakdown structure based technique, parametric, statistical technique, part technique, there are lot many techniques available for this. Similarly, for schedule, Kokomo method, critical path based method, cost, everything. Phase wise distributor, the phase, the difference phases depending on the SDLC and the type of project phase may vary. We know that for typical waterfall model for uh, development project. What are the uh, generic phases? We know that requirement analysis, then design, high level, low level design, then construction, unit testing, system testing, integration testing, like that. And what would be the typical distribution of effort and schedule? Now, for the maintenance project, the number of FT, that FT calculator, that is extremely, extremely important. Okay? So to say, uh, for a managed service application, say like uh, 500 or 1,000 applications for uh, different technology, developed in diff different technology, or maybe uh, different domain also, what are the number of FTs required uh, to support all those things? You need to know that when all, the, you need to categorize it, that when all those applications has been implemented, whether it is a very stable application or not, whether uh, how many concurrent users are using those uh, applications. So depending on different parameters, actually our framework will guide you. It is our framework, we have made our framework intelligent enough. Gathering all the intelligence and knowledge from you. See, whenever we are doing some estimate, it may be guesstimate type, but something in your brain is working or back of the mind something is working. We are translating and collecting all those informations from different persons and we collectively we are forming some estimation parameters, estimation techniques so that we can eliminate person dependency, system can suggest you what would be, what would be the best way to do the estimation. Next is this driving the accuracy as I mentioned that depending on the decision matrix, we need to identify what would be the best suited method. See, for some project, for a given combination of those decision metrics, it can be function point for size estimation, maybe bottom up technique for uh, effort estimation, Kokomo method for maybe the schedule estimation, like that. So that is very, very important. Now, see here one interesting thing is, this is some thumb rule, like if it is a development project, size estimation technique should be function point. Or if it is a uh, uh, agile, um, uh, the SDLC is agile, then we will go for story point based estimation. If it is a object oriented, then we will go for use case point. Like that, but you will get a flavor of different technique and your historical data will help you that which one you should follow, which one would be the best suited. That is extremely, extremely important. And the final one, how to improve our model. Okay? For that, we need to collect actual data from closed projects. That is the quantitative data. Then the user's feedback, some qualitative data. Then we need to we need to compute the productivity, the estimation variance for size, effort, schedule, or cost. And there are some related metrics. Now, what we need to do? We can benchmark our productivity. We can compare our productivity against the industry benchmark data 
to get a feel, where are you with respect to industry, whether you are doing really good or bad, if bad, where you need to improve, do the causal analysis, then how effectively your model is working, say how many percentage of say your acceptable limit if, if it is a plus minus 10 percent band, how many projects, how many percentage projects are falling into that band, okay. So, if it is really good say maybe 80 percent or 90 percent, then you will get a feel that yes, my model is working. If it is 20 or 30 percent, then you need to do a deep root causal analysis that what is what went wrong, okay? And then the identify, you need to identify the levers for improvement, the qualitative, quantitative, and we need to incorporate all those things in your recommended model. So, it is a evolving model. Today, you have developed something and that is not all. Continuous feedback through this PDCA cycle, it will help you that you are at par with industry, you are current, your model is current, your model may be working fine probably uh, say uh, three years back but now in the present current scenario it may not. So, you need to be very much agile, you need to be very much flexible and continuously you need to improve, okay. Now, uh, I, I like to pass on the baton to Shangamitra who will uh, come up with some real life example. Over to you, Shangamitra. Hello, good evening everybody and welcome to the session once again. I will start by helping you recollect the scenario which Pranabindu was referring to in the very beginning. The CIO of an organization coming to him with a huge problem of incurring millions and billions dollars of losses due to projects getting scrapped midway of not getting delivered in time. So, what I am going to demonstrate to you today speaks of a very, very similar situation when we were asked to come and consult them for a C situation which was kind of similar. So, let me start off by giving you the scenario. What was exactly happening in that organization? The projects, 50 percent of the projects were not getting delivered on time. Now, who was approving the bu budget? Business. Who was delivering the projects? IT. Since none of the projects were getting delivered on time, there was a lot of resentment between business and IT. Business was refusing to approve any further budget to complete the projects. The internal customers very, very unhappy since the projects were not getting delivered, they were not able to go to the market on time. Very, very low level of trust between the stakeholders and their peers because whenever a single point estimate, whenever some budget was thrown up to them, they did not know whether they would be able to deliver the project within their time limit. ROI was very, very poor no risk management in the projects. They were not able to spend money on cost saving initiatives. Why? Because anyways they were incurring huge losses just to meet the deadlines. So, when we were called in to come and help them in solving their problem, do you know what they told me? They said, Madam, fuzzy estimates fuzzy project execution, fuzzy budget, nothing is working for us. You help us with one problem. Please help us in alleviating, in cutting down the millions of dollars of losses 
that we are spending and that we are you know incurring in IT spend each and every year. So we with our estimation expertise and armed with the estimation framework that Pranamindu was just explaining a few moments back, we went and solutioned and designed a four-pronged solution architecture for them. So let's take a look at what we designed for them. Here goes the four stages. The first stage, determine. It was a fit gap analysis phase to find out what are their existing problems. Are they doing any estimations at all or are they just throwing up numbers? Are they doing any sort of size estimation to understand what is the volume of work they are delivering? Are they benchmarking any productivity? Are they comparing themselves internally or with the industry? What is the amount of spend or the amount of effort spent in the different project management quality initiatives that they would be incurring as effort in their projects? So at the end of the determined phase, we came up with a fit gap analysis report and we came up with a prescription as to what they should do to come out from this problem. So the next stage, the very, very important stage, design and develop. Here is where we brought in that multidimensional framework, customized it and aligned it to their organizational needs. Third one, deploy, where we started hand-holding all the stakeholders to deploy the estimation framework which we had designed for them. And finally, of course, it was the demonstration of the results and the outcome of the deployment of that estimation framework. So let us take a deeper dig, a deeper look at what we designed and what we developed for them. So here, Let's see, take a look at the solution that we designed for them. In the left hand side, you can see the different estimation parameters and on the top, the different project level attributes. So you can see that the different techniques are there, the size, in the effort, in the schedule, let's say in the size, your function point, use case point, feature point. On the top, the different project level attributes like SDLC waterfall or agile, technology, agile, and there may be n level of parameters. So as and when, you know, each and every project attribute was getting introduced, your techniques option was getting narrowed down. So my esteemed friend sitting in front, her project attributes will offer him a different, her a different technique than my esteemed colleague sitting here who has probably similar set of attributes, but maybe the project execution type is different. So at the end of it, you get a distinct set, which as Pandabindu was referring to, is the estimation model, which will be used for a particular project. And in case you get multiple estimation techniques for a particular estimator component, let's say size estimation, herein comes the people experience. You cannot undermine the people experience part. So that is what is fed into the framework and the framework will recommend you which is the best fit estimation model. Next, the deployment phase. In just one line, this is what the CIO had told to us. Do you know what is the biggest USP of your framework? Each and every person who is involved in doing the estimation in our organization is able to use your framework seamlessly, intuitively. Everything is guided by the framework. Having said and done all of this, were they really happy at the end of the day? Did they get what they were expecting or did they get more? Let us take a look. They had the scrap value of their projects had gone down dramatically. Ex 
extreme improvement in projects, very less effort slippage, very less cost slippage. I would like to show you another slide, you know, where the graphs are better demonstrated. Okay. okay, so let me tell you, let me just give you a demonstration as to what happened in that scrap value reduction. In four years, the scrap value in year one when we had gotten to the engagement, the scrap value was around $500 million. At the end of the fourth year, when we were transitioning out, the scrap value had reduced to $142 million. For model effectiveness, for one particular model, in the first phase when only 30% you know, of the projects were in the plus minus 10% variance phase, when we moved out, around 75% of the projects were in the plus minus 10% variance stage. And today, today I can tell you that 90% of their projects in the plus minus 10% variance stage. In all the four years, in all the four years, they showed a steady improvement of productivity across all the seven to eight major platforms in which they are working. So, to sum it up, as project managers, where we are involved in a day-to-day -day estimation of projects, to utilize the science and art of estimation properly, to deliver accurate and predictable estimates, to remove uncertainty, which is the theme of this event, an estimation framework like this is the call of the day. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Pranabindu and Shangamitra. It definitely my key takeaways out here have been your f the feedback, which is very important to actually get to the right estimation model, and also the four Ds you talked about, right. determine, design, deliver, okay. and deploy, deliver. Uh, so if I may ask Abhinav if you can come on stage and hand over the mementos to our esteemed speakers. Thanks a lot, gentlemen.